Hello, this is Carrie Bro from Two Bros Healing, and I want to share with you a natural first aid kit that we put together. And basically, it is things that I found that I deal with all the time. And I think having some ready supplies to deal with things is a good idea. So I want to share this with you. So what I have, I'm going to share with you um, all of these things. But what um, what I have here is a little bag. And on the there's some outside pockets on both sides that you can put things. And I have several things in here that I'll go over. And then inside I have some little bottles of things, <laughs> um, some assorted bandages. I have some teas and some little um, containers of certain things, as well as um, some tools. So we'll get, we'll get into that. So I'm going to describe what I have in there and uh, how to use some of it. All right, so one of the first things that I have is some liquid bentonite clay. And um, there's a couple companies that have it. I found this one, Yerba Prima, Great Plains, is a form of it's a liquid clay and it's a it's a certain kind of a clay that um, I believe it's from uh, volcan it's from volcanic ash and it comes this one comes from where it was uh, mined in Fort Benton Wyoming where it occurs um, in large amounts and clay is very interesting it's not actually digested it passes through the GI tract the gastrointestinal tract where it binds to um, unwanted substances, uh, toxins, it removes them through the body, through the stool. And um, it has a great detoxification, a very strong detoxification effect, and um, has the ability to bind with things. So it is an adsorbent. And we're going to talk about that again with charcoal being an adsorbent, although it does absorb, but it adsorbs. And what that's like, an ab absorbing with a B would be like, taking a sponge and soaking up a bunch of liquid and then or something and you know or a paper towel and, and cleaning something up and then like squeezing it out or having that come out adsorbing would be more like um, w um like maybe when you have a condensation uh, attracted to your window you know it doesn't become part of that glass although it's like the, you know the the condensation is collecting on the window we could take the window out to move that condensation. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not, it doesn't become part of it and you, you can move it. Um, also, I like to think about it like in the body, it's kind of like a train cars. And you know, it, it, you can fill those, those train cars up with things to move them. So that's kind of how it is in the body, absorbing it's like a, a train cars. And they have different affinity for certain things. It's like, you know, in a train, a passenger uh, car is different than uh, one that you would put um, freight in, right? I mean, if you're going to put big containers and stuff, it's different than one that seats, you know, people. So that's the difference between some of these. And um, one of the things I like to use this for is um, you just have, an, you know, you have enough with you that you can uh, remedy a lot of things. You know, we get exposed to a lot of toxins, so we can take something. We're eating several times a day, and, you know, food may or may not be good, especially when you're away from home. You know, and you, you've eaten something or you've ingested something that's just not agreeing with you. So clay is kind of a very benign way to to help pull out some basic things through the body. And it's also very, very good for putting it on topically. Um, sometimes when you get uh, something on your skin and irritating your skin, it could even be poison ivy. With the poison ivy, it has a, a, a chemical called urushiol, which... Uh, that's the poison part of the poison ivy. So whenever you have that, it's good to kind of wash that off with, you know, um, you know, with a decent uh, soap and water as soon as possible. And then you can apply something like this. If you can't, then you, you have to do it as best as you can. And we also have colloidal silver in there, which can help to, to uh, clean the skin. We'll get there. Okay, anyway, so you can clean the skin and then you can put on, you can just use this clay. It's very thin. And you can put it right on the irritated skin. Any rash, any pimple, any boil, any um, itching. This is one good thing to, to have to try. Um, because sometimes you want to go one way or the other. Sometimes we'll use apple cider vinegar to, to use that as well. Which it, having a lot of tools in your toolbox helps. So we'll get there when we talk about that. 
So that's really good if you want it for, you know, poison ivy or plant reactions, insect stings, uh, boils, pimples, also slivers. A lot of times for, with kids, I will put, you know, cotton or something with um, the bentonite clay on it and then tape it on for a little while. And if it's a small enough, you know, several small slivers or nothing that's huge, of course, um, it will help a lot of times just pull it right out. <laughs> you know, sometimes even it'll help move bigger ones up to the surface and then you can start dealing with it without traumatizing the child. You know, after it calms, you know, he, he or she calms down, you can then maybe put some ice on it and cool it down and then go look with your tweezers, magnifying glass and flashlight and um, get out anything that's needed or a piece of glass also, you, you know, help pull that up toward the surface. It's amazing. Okay, so that's liquid bentonite. Then we also have a very close cousin, activated charcoal. And charcoal, it's not the same charcoal as you cook with, okay? It's different. <laughs> don't, so don't use ever use charcoal briquettes uh, in place of this. It's a totally different animal, even though they have similar names. But this is used to treat certain types of poisoning. Even in emergency rooms, they will use charcoal to absorb, absorb actually lots of terrible, terrible poisons. And um, there's, you can look online to see all the different chemicals that it will absorb. But some of them are NSAIDs, um, over-the-counter uh, sedatives, uh, calcium channel blockers, um, malaria medis medicines, methyl xanthines, um, just to name a few. So it will absorb a lot of nasty poison and it will help uh, absorb lots of, you know, cases of somebody being poisoned by a poison or poisoned from a food or other substances. So this is in uh, capsule form and you can, uh, I find it, it's good to have if there's really a, a bad poisoning, at least you have something you can start and it, uh, I would open the capsules up if, if in a severe case of poisoning and stir it in the liquid and have the person drink that. If it's a mild thing like food, I don't want to say mild food poisoning, but if it's, you know, you're, you're kind of poisoned from a meal, it's not sitting right, it's, it's like, oh, this chicken wasn't good, I'm feeling a little, ugh. you know, it's not like you just drank some bleach or something like that, you know, something really bad, but it's something that you want to do something about. You can take some of the capsules, um, certain amounts for, you know, based on body weight and um, have it. You can, you can take the capsules and then you can drink a bunch of water. You want to have water with this, either the capsules or dilute it in enough water to give it something to carry it through. Now, this is the, think about the little train. This is the train that's going in your body that's going to pile on all kinds of poisons and then it will be excreted through your body. So this is, um, you know, this is the, um, one of the easiest routes to help bind really nasty poisons. So uh, that's what I would use this one for. All right. Um, you can also put it on the skin too, but I like charcoal or I like the, uh, the clay better for certain things. All right. Apple cider vinegar. One of my favorite things. I mean, this can be put on the skin, um, you know, diluted a little bit, uh, half and half for sunburn or burns. Um, Sometimes if something is not responding to an alkaline, it might respond to an acid. You know, if you've put bentonite or baking soda on something and it's not affecting it, either relieving the itch or the inflammation, then you can go the other way with apple cider vinegar. But I like, one of my favorite, favorite things for this is for gallstones. When you're away from home and you get a gallbladder attack, a gallstone, it's horrible. You should immediately not eat anything with fat in it. No no oils, no fats, no peanut butter, no avocados. You know, if, if there's any gallbladder symptoms, stop that immediately and then get start getting lemons and limes and water. But when you have an attack, um, one of the best things that I found, not only for myself, but for others, is if you have, if you mix apple cider vinegar with apple juice. And that, that really is amazing because it starts to open up that, uh, that's that duct. And if there is a stone clogging it, will, it will relieve that tension. A lot of times when you're traveling or when you're away, you know, or even at home, you know, different things create tension and you're in a stressful, you know, traveling, um, you know, you, you get into a fight or flight and that sphincter, I think it's sphincter vodi, um, 
closes up and then it you know what might have been you know okay sort of stone now the the, the place that it's residing is putting pressure on it so it relaxes those valves opens that up so that you can then get on top of that but anyway drinking that is amazing because it, it sometimes it just stops you know the attack in its tracks and if you don't have apple juice you can just dilute the apple cider vinegar and, and drink that sip on that and it and it slows that down um, yeah, that's, that's just an amazing thing to have. Otherwise, it's really good for acid reflux because, you know, you put a teaspoon or two in some uh, warm water after a meal, you know, or that you're feeling kind of yucky. It will help to calm that down. The, the, the stomach, unless you have ulcerations in the stomach, um, it's usually not acidic enough to digest the food or you are in a sympathetic fight or flight mode and the, the stomach is not able to digest. So instead of digesting, the food is in there fermenting and then it's splashing up, you know, and giving you the heartburn or the acid reflux. So if we restore some acidity to the stomach, it will resume digestion and calm the whole thing down, usually. All right, this is a great thing to have. Otherwise, it's great on salad. <laughs> Baking soda. Uh, the great alkalizer. This is sodium bicarbonate, and there's there's other bicarbonates out there, but this is the easiest one. Sodium bicarbonate, and it's the bicarbonate. The bicarb is what we want, and that uh, that does so much in the body. It's a buffer. If something is too acid, it will help alkalize. If it's too alkaline, it'll help acidify it. But baking soda is the great alkalizer, and we find people are always when they're in pain, they're really acidic. Um, and that need we need to pull the body more alkaline. So um, it's it's been used like a half a teaspoon in water three times a day to help make the body more alkaline. But it's also you can take it you know half a teaspoon in about four ounces of water um, after a meal also because it will donate the hydrogens which will help buffer the stomach as well. So you can go one way or the other. Um, I would try to increase it you know, try to help the, the digestion out, but otherwise we can donate the, the, uh, the hydrogens and make your own, um, you know, have your own, uh, what would you call it? What's it, what is it, a, uh, can't even think of what those called, like Tums or anything like that, <laughs> but you'll make it in a better way, in a natural way. Um, also, this can be put in, in a bathtub for relief of itching. Um, it, it's very healing to the body. Okay, Redmond's Real Salt, we need salt. We really, we need, we really, really need salt. We need the right kind of salt. Um, Himalayan salt is all right. I like this because it comes from the United States. It comes from really good mines in Utah. And we have, uh, we can see that it, it's a little different color. It's like pinkish color. So it contains a lot of minerals in it as well. So it is also alkalizing. And the sodium chloride, when it, when it's in water in the body, the chloride ions help make hydrochloric acid in the stomach. So a lot of times, you know, if you have, um, you get the hydrogens from your vinegar, you know, this is a, a great salad, or you take it before you eat some of the vinegar and water, and then you have salt in your food. So now you're helping your body create hydrochloric acid to be able to digest. So you just have to have the good salt, not the crappy kiln dried sodium chloride with no other minerals in it. So we want the real thing, the real deal. Colloidal silver. Colloidal silver is the one of the best natural antimicrobials there are. There is. It can be put down safely in any orifice. You can put it in your eyes. Um, you drop it in your eyes if you've got like pink eye or sty or something in your eye, or you feel like you, you, your eyes are irritated. It helps safely cleanse any um, irritants out of the eye. You could put it in your nose. You can put a couple drops tilt your head back and, and down one nostril and let it go up and cleanse the sinuses if you have dry sinuses or if you're have, uh, you know, uh, reacting to hay fever or pollen, you know, to help cleanse the pollen out. Another thing I like this salt for is you can mix salt water and you can do a nasal lavage as well. You can eye drop it in or if, if you have a neti pot, you know, but you're talking about out in the field here um, to help cleanse uh, sinuses that are a lot of times dry or filled with mucus and, and, and stuff. So anyways, colloidal silver, you can use it with that as well. It can be sprayed on cuts and burns, you know, eyedropper it on. You can put on contusions, scratches, abrasions, rashes, irritated mucous membranes. 
it's just a anything that you would want to put like neosporin or something you can put you know, colloidal silver all right respiratory syrups there's so many good ones on the market i like all of these but i put in this kit i put this one the loquat respiratory syrup um with wild cherry bark but i like these as well and sometimes you know when you're i would advise you to try these all and see which ones work better for you and your uh where you live your conditions it's like it some might work better for somebody in a hot humid or a, a wet you know he a wet type of climate or versus a dry climate or a hot climate so you know there's blends of herbs and you know to try to say a one size fits all on that is hard but these are some of the best ones that i've found and i just i just like the the low quad but i like them all you know there's there's um some things to help soothe you know there's different things we want to do with respiratory syrups we want to soothe the membranes we want to calm down any coughs like i would only like the coughs to stop when somebody's sleeping you know to have a suppressant or to, to to calm that so they can sleep otherwise you're you're coughing to cough up phlegm and garbage and the this is a very interesting thing to know if you if you have a toxic bowel which a lot of people do um you think oh i go to the bathroom fine no 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 but we're not gonna talk about that at the moment but usually people don't and when you don't go to the bathroom fine it comes out through the lungs and through the skin and if you have things like dry air blowing on you, cold air, you know, um, chilling you, it's going to exacerbate the condition. If you're tired and stressed, and if you don't have enough vitamin A to help your mucous membranes, they're going to get fatigued and tired, and you're going to have, you know, cough uh, symptoms, respiratory, I should say, respiratory symptoms. Anything from coughs, you know, uh, to bronchitis to pneumonia, and it gets worse and worse as the body gets more acidic. And, and more stressed, the cough gets worse, you know, we get stuff growing in it, you know, and the phlegm gets, you know, from clear, you know, uh, to hawkers, to yellow, to green, you know, and that's all uh, parts of the body um, being out of balance. And we want to get that reined in. We want that mucus thin. We don't want it thick and hawker-like. And we don't want it all irritated. And we don't want the voice irritated or the you know, the vocal cords or the respiratory tract or the pleura, or, you know, on and on and on. So anyway, having some good things, especially when you're not at home, to, to soothe some of that is a really good thing. All right, another thing that I like is this product from doTERRA called Deep Blue. And my favorite thing about this, I, it, they're marketing this as a uh, topical analgesic. You know, rub on sore muscles, which is fine. That's fine. But my favorite thing with this is to put a little bit on your hand, rub it together, and then open it up and then smell it. Deep breathing. <sighs> you know, get a deep with your nose or with your lungs. And the vapors on this in this form come off the best. I've tried it just in their little dropper bottle, and it doesn't work as well as the this combination in this lotion. It just opens up. I mean, I've shown hundreds of people clog sinuses and just they just breathe that, you know, three or four times. I make them do three or four deep breaths. <sighs> All right. And then it, it really opens them up. I mean, some people that were just so clogged. It's amazing. It is that's my favorite thing with this. So if, if you can't breathe, you know, so much, you're not oxygenating, you're not well, you're not sick. So, you know, if you can't breathe with because of obstruction, um, you know, from phlegm and mucus, you're not doing good. So we, if we start opening that up, then we can start dealing with the phlegm and mucus and thin it out and get the person hydrated and yada, yada. All right. Another product I love. I love this stuff. Nature Gel. Um, from Nature's Balance in High Point, North Carolina, and their number is right in here. It has a, didn't I put this in here? No, they don't have it listed. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, there's Arnica, Calendula, Comfrey, Feverfew, Golden Seal, Lobelia, Plantain, St. John's Wort, White Cedar, White Willow, and White Indigo. This is the best for soothing things that I have found for so many things. I mean, this is the best thing I've found for itching. Like, you know, some people get into just itching. I, I was in a pond cleaning our pond one time, and there was some really nasty plants that just, you know, I, it got in my wetsuit and oh, it just started immediately itching. And if I did, I ran in the house, I pulled my wetsuit off and I, you know, I ran in and I had this stuff and I just like put it all, all over myself. If I didn't have this, I would have shot myself. I mean, that was so bad. I was just, 
it, it just came on and my whole body was itching and hot. It was horrible. But I, that, that was like, I am a believer. I bought stock in the company. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wish I could have. But um, it was amazing. But I've tried it over you know, long, a lot of years with a lot of people in a lot of situations. It's one of the best out there. Tromiel homeopathic cream. This is pretty cool. This is a homeopathic cream that helps on a esoteric level trauma to an injury. Um, something that was bruised, contused, scraped, cut, burned. Uh, this just helps restore function. Um, it, it's like it, it really reduces inflammation, um, shortens the inflammatory time, you know, of something, you know, for how quickly something can heal. It's kind of like, um, it's like going, oh, on a, on a, oh, you poor thing, let me just hug you. But it's like, as a substance, as a, as, I don't even know how to describe it, as an invisible, you know, it's like that, that love vibe on something. It's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, it helps you gain your normal mobility a little bit faster. I've, I've started using it even on, on old injuries with people with a lot of success. It's non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory, um, helps with the neuromuscular injuries, you know, good for acute neuromuscular injuries like sprain strains, um, tendinosis, tendinopathy, uh, stress fractures, anything involving ligaments or muscles, tendons, bones, or associated with any neurovascular um, neurovasculature. So that's uh, a lot of stuff. It could be any, any sudden impact any physical muscular overworks or overload repetitive use of a joint or muscle group um, could it, it's great for really helping to relieve pain and inflammation now i wouldn't do any one one thing and try to do a combination of things that's always you get better results but the more tools you have you know the better your painting looks on some level. all right um calendula ointment I had a lot of water-based things in there and I wanted something that was oil-based that could be put on, you know, it kind of cuts, scrapes, burns, chapped, you know, anything chapped or rough or raw on the skin because you want to seal in the moisture. And that's what this is for. Plus calen calen calendula, I can't say that, um, is just an amazing herb that helps, you know, it's just, it's one of the, what's one of the best herbs that I know for helping things like that on the skin. It's just an amazing plant. Um, but being in this um, oily, you know, uh, balm is, is, uh, is the go-to for sealing in the moisture. All right, another go-to to have is magnesium gel. So many conditions require magnesium. There's, it does over 300 different things in the body. And the biggest thing I like it for is to handle tension and anxiety in depression, in pain. <laughs> That's a lot. You know, so it, people are it, don't get enough magnesium. People need to supplement with magnesium every day. And I find a topical form is absorbed in the body really quick. This is absorbed in the body totally in 20 minutes, and then it can be wiped off because it's a little sticky. It's a gel, but when you're in pain or something, you know, that's secondary. So I like to put about a teaspoon on, and you can rub it into the area or um, like if it's a low back or something like, or whatever, I've also, I like to put it on the gauze and I'll just stick it right on, you know, put it on the gauze or I've even used a paper towel and then just like squirt it out or put it on there and then slap it on wherever. And, um, 20 minutes later it, it can be off, but it's absorbed in the body. It just comes from that Zechstein mine in Germany. And this is a magnesium chloride. So it's a form of magnesium that absorbs in really, really well. Um, muscle cramping insomnia, leg, restless leg, tension, anxiety, muscle spasms, uh, ticks and twitches, you know, you get the twitchy eye, don't put it on your eye, just put it on a patch and put it on your back, it'll be absorbed and go to your eye, okay, you don't have to put it right over the area, you don't have to do that, um, put it on your leg, on your butt, whatever, <clears throat> it's calmative and soothing if you're upset or somebody's anxious, you know, they can just put a, a slap a, a Magnesium patch on them and it will calm them down. You can do it. You can do it multiple times a day. Epsom salts is, is also another form of magnesium. It's magnesium sulfate. Um, it's not in here, but I just thought I'd mention it. Um, a nice a cup or two of Epsom salts in a bath is wonderful as well. But this is something out in the field. You got to do something now. 
Okay, stopping bleeding. Well, direct pressure, but um, I put this, this styptic powder, which is, they call it dog swell. I found it under pets. You know, it's like what um, vets and um, the, the people do the nails and the, the grooming on dogs use if they cut the nails and the quick is going and it's bleeding, they stick it in there and it usually stops it pretty quick. Um, I've seen that on human, I've, I've, I've used it, but then I've also used cayenne pepper. So I put both of them in there and I've, you could, cayenne doesn't burn, um, I mean, if you, mucous membranes, if you put it in your mouth, it will, but if you put it on your skin, it won't, not any more than Bactine or something like that, but um, it will stop bleeding. I have used cayenne with people in amazing things. I had people cut their fingers to the bone and I call, they call me and I say, you know, pack that thing with cayenne and tape it up and then you see tomorrow, next day, and it will heal it up. You might have to repack it and keep it on there for maybe a week, you know, just change the, the bandage and, you know, keep it packed in there. But I've seen things grow back as long as you don't keep messing with it. Don't keep playing with it and seeing, you know, just keep it packed, keep it clean. But um, I've seen it stop immediate bleeding, you know, cuts, really deep cuts. Um, you may have to elevate it, you know, use some common sense as well. Don't go just like put it on there and go running around, like let it have time to coagulate and stop. But uh, two really good things. You can put it under a bandage and then wrap over top of it. I've had, you know, many cuts that I've just put on a, you know, finger and, you know, sprinkle the cayenne on there and put a Band-Aid on there and hold it for a couple minutes and, and then it's fine. All right. Tweezers, magnifying lens, and a flashlight. Oh, my. It's not the best picture. Sorry. But um, tweezers, you definitely need a good pair of tweezers. And I have them in that little case so that they keep it clean. There's a little mag there's a, a magnifying glass that, you know, you can see, use to see. It's so important to have that when you're needing it. <laughs> um, and then a flashlight, of course. So you can hold that with your mouth or have the person hold it if you need to. Have small enough so you can do the job. You know, these are just annoying things that if you, it's like, oh man, I wish I had a, you know, tweezers. How many times do you want to have a tweezers for something? You know, magnifying glass to see in a light. Okay. Some teas. Sometimes having a cup of tea, you know, you get gas and bloating from something. You know, these are really good for soothing the, the whole GI tract. Sleep and relax. You know, you're traveling or you're upset, cal you know, this helps calm you down. These, these herbs, passion flower, lemon balm, chamomile, wonderful. Um, chamomile is a great herb. I like, it's like the, the baby herb. Anybody that's into the, you know, like it, it calms like, like that two-year-old in all of us, you know, where you're just, you just are so fussy and, you know, um, you're not happy or satisfied. You just, no, no, why don't want it. You know, that whiny kind of just like, err. Chamomile is great for that. So adult two-year-olds, get in the chamomile. Okay, bronchial wellness. This is a good one too because it has things to help um, the respiratory tract. You know, peppermint, licorice. These are some really nice herbs to, to, um, to help uh, soothe. Uh, I don't want to move this out of the way. And eucalyptus, I couldn't read that. Uh, yeah, so eucalyptus as well. And, and you know, we used to put... Um, you know, breathe over the tent, you know, something. You could even put that in something and breathe over the, you know, like put the, the, the uh, towel over your head and then a tea bag in a pot of water, you know, and breathe those fumes. That's really good. And another thing um, for respiratory was um, Vicks Vapo Rub. And the big deal about Vicks Vapo Rub was, I mean, not only the eucalyptus menthol in there, but there's turpentine. And that is the key ingredient in that. So that's a carrier. And it carries that into the body. And I, I'm not quite sure how they got uh, out of uh, putting it on the label somehow, but that's the magic ingredient in that. So that's that's another good thing. All right, nearing the end. Small containers. You see I put all those in here, and I put these in here so you can get these products and refill them um, and maybe add to it. I also put a, a, a dropper, I mean a, a sprayer in here too, in your colloidal silver. I just put the regular top on, but... So you can pour it out or you can spray it. Sea salt, baking soda, and cayenne in these little containers here. Oh, and I also put, there it is, the a emergency rain poncho. Um, if you need to have, you know, you don't have an umbrella, you need to make a little shelter, you need to keep somebody warm, you need to keep warm. You, you know, one side is a, a silver and the other side is that intense orange. So you can have it also to attract attention or to keep warm. All right, this is just a good thing to have. 
So it all fits nicely in your little pouch and you can, it has room for a lot more. There's an, again, assorted bandages and band-aids and, and some gauze and it's all here really easy to access and it's small. This is, you can see that, you know, these are two ounce or one ounce bottles and this is a small bag can be carried with you. All right, check us out. Uh, you can contact us. We'll probably have it here um, on the tubrosehealing.online. And you can also check out our tubrosesoundtables.com. All right, thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy this. All right, bye for now.